the Overcomers series, season three is brought to you by Johnil Alcock, MBF Group Limited, Scripture Trinkets by AP. We see each other many times by our titles, careers, or how we look physically. But behind each face, there is a story to tell about triumph over trial. We can also learn how God has brought us to where we are by His supreme grace and goodness. Let's explore the lives and testimonies of some amazing humans on the Overcomers series. This week on the Overcomers series. Welcome to another episode of the Overcomers series. Have you found ways to talk to people about Jesus, about God? One and two, um, their church is there, I presume. Um, what's the worship like compared to Jamaica and the Caribbean? <laughs> yeah. So for me, I have spoken to people about Jesus um, several times. I don't believe in being forceful because at the end of the, the day, I would not want somebody to force Buddhism on me, which is something that they do very regularly here. Because there's sometimes I be in my bed and I'm like, oh, my package from Amazon is here. And the moment I, you know, open my door, somebody's like, they want to talk about Buddha. And I would say, you know, with all due respect, I, I don't want to. And they'll actually step into my house and they'll give me <laughs> like, yeah. And Japanese people are not usually invasive. They actually respect space. But yeah, these yeah. people are like the, you know. Like the Jehovah people. Witness of the <laughs> I was going to say these people are like the Asian Jehovah Witness, but I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not saying this is a Johnny's show. But yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And so um, they like say, you come to the station now. And I'm like, yeah. no, it's a Sunday. I'm going back in my bed and I say, see my sin. Or sometimes I'll say, I don't speak Japanese, which is Nihongo Hohana Sema Sen. And they're like, okay, fine, no problem. And they'll still leave the, um, the, the voucher. But anyway, so because of that, and even before that, I always believe that people should have their free will, but it doesn't hurt to know about Jesus. And so there are times when I talk about it. I do it at school as well, even though it's not allowed, because of course, you know, in first world countries, they don't ask you or they ask you not to mention religion. Unless it's but I'll do it, Yeah, but I'll, I'll do it in like games and stuff like that. Um, like I'll be like, what is the name of my, my, my God who I worship? And they're like, yes, Christo, which is Jesus mm. Christ in Japanese. Um, and then I'll probably show them slides of um, New Year celebrations or Christmas celebration. And I'll definitely show them like me at church, me performing and stuff like that. You asked about the church. The church in Japan is almost like Helsha United. I believe it's so chilled because, you know, a lot of times people tend to think that, oh, Helcha is way too calm. But that's actually my preferred way of worship because I really learn more when the environment is serene, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so when I went to church in Japan, it was quite well, they were welcoming. Uh, they actually sang my favorite song the first time I went and it was, As the deer panteth for the water so much so long as after leave but they sang it yeah. in um japanese so it's like tani ga wa no na gare o shita o shita no yo ni and that has just stuck with me and it just reminds me of how good god is because even if i don't understand the language just the fact that i and i actually went to learn that song because i was like if i don't learn anything in this life i've learned my favorite song in the country that i live in um but yes yeah, so it it really reminds me of how good God is because no matter where I am, I still feel that same presence. Now, with COVID, admittedly, I do not go to church um, as often because I'm very wary of how much I congregate with people outside of school because I already teach every student in the school. Um, so I try to be aware of that. But when I came to Jamaica last year, I led praise and worship because I just wanted to to be back in that space, you know, and also to just remind people that, you know, boy, move Ghana fine, but boy, never forget God yet. So that's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And so where you go, Jesus is everywhere. Yup. Which is basically what Lidget said. And you know what else? They probably look at you and know you're Jamaican. How, 
Who told you that I was a Jamaican? Look behind him. Oh, you know I'm Jamaican. Yeah, exactly. Who told me I was a Jamaican? But it, it, the vibe of it and, and our personality a lot of times comes off without the Jamaican flag in the background. Um, oh, absolutely. But the other thing I want to ask is, have they come up to you and usually ask the usual questions like, do you smoke ganja? Um, are you a musician? <laughs> and stuff like that. Or if you know Bob Marley... They do the same thing. So, yeah. So I've actually been asked if I'm American because, yeah. because people are actually surprised that Jamaicans speak English. That's one thing they didn't oh. know. So when I came here, they thought I was American. But when I came to my school, the first thing a teacher asked me was, where are my locks? <laughs> and so I had to remind him, I had to tell him that, you know, majority of people in Jamaica actually do not wear locks. Our Rastafarian community is almost like a minor group. But of course, we intertwine and we celebrate with them as they celebrate with us in, in, in um, general assemblies and in, in activities. Um, before I came, I'll just say this. Some people who actually didn't even know that I didn't smoke said, hey, I heard that you're a Jamaican because they have contact with you while you're in Jamaica. So while I was preparing, some Japanese people and some um, people from the Caribbean and other countries could see me because we're in one Facebook group. And they're like, oh, when you get here, let me know because I have the link to weed and them stuff there. And I was like, why you stereotype me? <laughs> I was like, I don't smoke. Of course, people always ask me if I, if I sing um and no matter where i go whether i go to the doctor the barber whatever and they say where are you from and i say i'm jamaican and they're like oh bob marley and i'm like yes bob marley but they'll also mention usain bolt of course so can you imagine how the tokyo olympics when we did well um they were all over the jamaica contingent so it was just a very proud moment i felt mm -hmm. seen i felt like i was the king of the world here at that time so you check out the dance hall scene because they love um, reggae music over there. Oh, absolutely. So when I've when I've been to events and I've been to parties, even with the embassy, there's actually a very big dance hall scene here. Of course, everybody knows that it's one of the biggest markets in the world. Um, they also love coffee. I heard them playing coffee and I heard them playing Shensia. And it was just <clears throat> a sense of pride. Yeah, yeah. yeah Shensia. And I, it was just a sense of pride when I heard them um, because I'm like, wow, you really never know. You know, sometimes you're in Jamaica and you think that, oh, your music is only playing in Jamaica, but people love you. Like People don't even get to come to Japan on a regular basis. I'm sure Shensia has never been to Japan. Coffee has been here before. But mm. then a lot of times these artists, they're making an impact and they think they're making an impact in Jamaica and the US only, but here's Japan like downloading all their music. So yeah, man, it's really good. And the Jamaican restaurants here and the copycat one them because there are some who missed the mark, you know. But when I tell you, say, them have a lot of decorations and a bag of things you that think you're in at the Miggle of downtown or probably in Mobe. <laughs> so yeah, man, they love us. Ah, oh, blessings, blessings. So how do I say you now to go to the next commercial break? Who told you I was Jamaican? Who told you? <laughs> you can't say that in Japanese. Who told you I was Jamaican? No, I can't say that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but these two Jamaican men have to go for another commercial. Scripture trinkets by AP for all your unique tokens and gifts. Check out our line of car trinkets, keyring trinkets, fridge magnets, Christmas ornaments, custom trinkets and plaques, and much more. Go ahead, pick the perfect gift and share the word boldly. Hi, right, welcome back. And we are still with Legitimate. And as you can see, it still has the flavor and the vibe, which is something we want to talk about. But before we get there, did you experience homesickness while you were away? And how did you deal with it? Oh, yeah. So the question, hey, I think you'd be a better question if you ask, did I not experience ah. this? <laughs> so, now, bring it back to 2019. Of course, Rev prayed for me at church and everybody, you know, mm -hmm. stretched their hands and they're like, oh, he will go and he will flourish and he will do what he does and come back in about a year or two, whatever. Now, Janil, you guys are lucky I never come back in week one. 
because when I just got there, I had the support of my school, as I told you. But it's something that you never really can be able to imagine it. You only can experience it. That shock of being from a very vibrant culture to segueing into a place where you just feel nothingness. And so there are times when I just came and I question, you know, why did I come here? You know, what was the reason? What was my purpose? Did I really think this through? I remember the very first day I came home after work because I usually think to myself that, oh, I'm a loner. I don't need anybody. I grew up as a single child for most of my years. And when I actually came and I lay down in that bed in this apartment, I actually started crying. And I cried because I thought to myself, this cannot be it. Like, I didn't come here to just stay into this bed, go to work, and come back and stay in the bed like this is not the life i imagined if i was in jamaica fine because at least i'd hear some um my brother them or i'd hear my family or something but you really just become very lonely when you when you when you arrive and so i thought to myself wow i cannot do this um but it was actually very short-lived because one thing for me is i'm going to probably mope around something but once again you never ever see a version of your life that will not be sorted out if you believe in God. And so for me, I always say this thing, and it's something that I've coined and I've, hear, I've heard people using it. And it's a term that says it has never not worked out. And so in that moment, it never seemed as if it was going to work out, but it did just as if everything else or just as everything else did. And so that homesickness turned into me challenging myself you know once again that end goal came when i saw that first salary because we're not going to just talk about oh when we come firing and we'll have a strong mind or whatever sometimes the salary does help when i see that salary and i never hold that much money after one job before and i realized the impact that i could have on my mother because i will say the first time i got paid which was the first month i was here my mother said she wanted a laptop laptop so she wanted a fo phone so she wanted this this and like these were the things that started keeping me you know afloat in the earlier stages until i spoke to one of my friends who who was here and you know it's so poetic she went to journalism school with me as well and i've never spoken to her again after she graduated before me and i just spoke up her here and she was like leech you're here, you're talented, and you're doing well, and I know that you will flourish, but never leave here without doing something for yourself. Yeah, you buy your mother a laptop, yeah, you do this, yeah, you do that, but what are you doing for yourself? Mm -hmm. And so I've always said to myself as well, Janine, that purpose is not only where you can serve people or give up give off your skills but also where you are served and it don't mean that it's the same people or the same things that you do things for will come back to you it just means that your work will speak for itself you know the things that you do just by god being in your presence it will come back in whichever way even if it means that you don't see it now. And so I said to myself, I need to be investing more in me. You know, I've had too many years of just doing things because I'm never expecting how it will benefit me in the long run. And so when she said that to me, I said, you know what? I feel like I want to go back to school. Now, school is something that nobody could ever convince me to go back for love nor money because I hated school. Went to good schools. I did well in them. <laughs> relatively but i did not like school but something said to me lidge do a master's i applied for a master's within four months of being here and i remember at the same time i was traveling because i actually went to two countries in a space of three months and i was like wow this is the life but of course covid kind of humbled that for me and it was like you need to sit back and kind of 
start focusing now because this is not a little boy thing no more. You're not doing this as a 21-year-old, as a 22-year-old. This is me being 25. You know, I need to start thinking about my future. And so I did school and thankfully to God, in July 31st this year, I will be finishing my master's program. Um, and so apart from education serving me, I also thought of how my talents will make way for me. And so I decided that I wanted to do music. Oh, now so, then, stick the pin before you go to yeah, you know what, yeah. what you have to go to now. But tell me, what, what, did you, um, what did you study? And how do you see it assisting you to do some of the things that you want to do in life? So I studied education, and, and mm -hmm. that is, when you mentioned the fact that, you know, education and journalism are similar, I definitely didn't want to do a second journalism degree. So I wanted to do something that I know could fit like a puzzle, like a glove to a hand. Mm -hmm. Education, journalism, you can never go wrong with that. It makes you so much more dynamic, not only in the space of me teaching students, because, of course, I've learned so many things as it relates to how to conduct a class, how to manage people. It's not just about how to teach, but how to manage them outside of the syllabus or the curriculum, how to understand people, how to work with your peers. So it's about managerial stuff. Um, so I could have run a school at this point with my skills mm -hmm. that I've learned. Um, but also, it has helped me to um, be better understanding of people. You know, one of the courses that I learned was, you know, the different needs that people have. Um, and some needs are special needs. Some needs are special educational needs. And so it really reminded me that, yo, every day we get up and we see people and we think that, oh, you're just really rude. But it could be a behavioral disorder. Or you clearly dumb, but you could be autistic. Or you are not pulling your weight, but it could mean that you're not fit for a standardized curriculum, but you are a gifted child who is who is magnificent in one thing, but probably weaker in other areas. And so I've used that not only to help me in the classroom, but also to understand people socially, even online, you know? So it really makes me more considerate and understanding for sure. Yeah. And... Um... Back to what you were about to say, where you're going to journey now into musical creative things that you have done. Yes. So every single time something made me homesick, to go back to your question, I try to level up. And I don't know, I don't know the exact term, but it's something that says you never really know your your potential until you get in hot water or until your back is against the wall and i feel like every single time that i'm about to say this is it this is a wrap i am coming home i just level up i find something else and i know it's not just me i know it must be god you know so it's something that i've never ever really thought of doing because in church for those who don't know i used to sing a lot minister a lot performed at many places I actually was even a part of a group that was planning to do music professionally, but I just never felt that the time was the time. And so every single time I was asked to do it, I used to say, no, I will guide you. I will help you. I'll give you the musical ear, but I was just never ready to do music. And it actually probably came from a fear of not making it in life at the time, because I thought that you know, if I do music and it fail, that's going to destroy my ego. That's going to destroy, you know, my esteem and so things like that. But once again, when you're in a country by yourself and you get that extra grit and that extra strength and you realize that ego and esteem don't matter because you're only here by yourself and you'll only do it for you. Um, and you can only do it for you because there's nobody in Jamaica that will make you successful musically if you're not there. You're like, it's up, the onus is upon me. I decided I was going to do music. No, this came actually in a very, very funny way. I created a YouTube song because everybody was be becoming creative or showing their creative side in the pandemic. And then I made this jingle. It said, lifestyle, my style now. We're taking over town, inspiring the crowd. Good vibes alone allowed. Journey high and journey low from Kingston straight to Tokyo. Life is such a crazy trip. Thanks for keeping it legit. And people are like, knowledge, you have talent. 
But funny, they didn't even know that I was not the one who recorded the song. I wrote it and I didn't I couldn't find a studio. And so I begged my bridging from Helsha called Lucas to record it for me. Now Lucas is somebody who would come to Helsha United now and again. And he said, All right, Lidge, have a home studio, I'll get it done for you. Recorded it, and people are like, No man, Lidge, this bad. You should actually make a full song. I'm like, full song, nah. I always said to myself that I will always sing for a concert or something, but I never want to do music. But there's something that was just pulling. It just said, do the music, release the song, release the song. It took me 11 months, 11 months. So I wrote that song from maybe January 2021 and maybe November 2021. Yeah, definitely. November 2021 was when it was released. And for those 10 months, I was patient, impatient, annoyed, inspired, done with it. Um, <laughs> through with it, everything, but the whole process of learning about the music business and making the song and making people listen to it and getting feedback and whatever, it really just reminds me that, you know, the things that you worry about now, maybe five months later, six months later, it won't matter anymore, you know? And so these are the things that I always kept thinking about as i went along i'm like i'm worried about the song i'm worried about if people is going people are going to like it i'm worried about if it's going to be received well you know but after a while no it's six months later that i've released the song and needless to say it has been a wonderful experience like way more successful than i ever think of and i just think i i just think that it was moving to this country that pushed me to get out of that hot water that made me do these things. I don't know if I could ever do it if I were in the comfort of my home. And that's why people always say, you know, um, they say that living in a box or being comfortable is beautiful, but nothing ever grows there. And mm. so I never forget that. I never forget that because my life is testament of that. Yeah, man. And wherever you are, you have to blossom and grow. You can't stay too confined because they say nothing uh, grows in the comfort zone and Absolutely. nothing um, that will challenge you or allow you to move to the next stage does anything in this safe, cultured area. So unless yeah. you push out, you make some mistakes, you learn, you adapt, that's how you grow. And it may look dirty. <laughs> for you it was 11 months one bag of pain and probably you really record things over and over and you're trying to figure out so will this work or not obviously it worked i have thousands of views of it on your youtube page no i actually recorded it in japan first and they told me no did and i came home actually mm. flew back to jamaica to record it <laughs> <laughs> so it goes so, to show about like the work that i wanted to put in it and by the way if anybody's watching i really just want you to know that when i'm saying that it worked for me when I moved geographically. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you have to move for things to happen for you, you know? Because when we're talking about the comfort, comfort is not necessarily a place. Comfort can literally be a situation, you know, or just the mindset or where you are mentally. So you can literally move from being in the comfort zone, even in the confines of your own bedroom watching this, you know? So just to clear that up a little bit. It worked yeah. for me when I moved, but it can work for you anywhere. Mm -hmm. So tell them now what season means for you. So season, and I hope you guys stream it, even though it's not spelled season, it's spelled S-Z-N. S Z N the young people call it season, or you can just type in legitimate my style. It speaks about walking in a purpose, and every single thing about that song speaks about my journey in Japan and my journey in life, even down to the numbers. The numbers in the song, because I have like a time, like a clock for every scene that I'm in. And at the beginning, it says 225. 225 is my birthday. And so it's like the moment I was born. So I get up in that music video. 944, 944. Incidentally, I don't believe in numerology. I believe in God. But it's a number that I've seen all my life. Like I'm always seeing 944 on the clock. And if you look at 944, it says, with the help of the, a higher being, your talents will make a way for you. And so I make it my duty to always just 
be intentional with every single thing I did. And so I threw all of that out there in the music video and in the song. The second verse says, The enemy a plot and them a plan but never prosper. Bless me never lucky, me not dopey, me not kiaspa. Anything <laughs> me have a everything me ever ask for. That's yeah. by God, of course. You couldn't walk in on my shoes, you told them would a fracture. That speaks mm -hmm. to me walking in my purpose and you walking in yours. My, me, I, me, vibes are from my mother. Oh, my brains. My brains are from my mother. Style and swag are from my father. They could have never dim my shine. I pass it to my brother. Secure the bag in Japan or Jamaica if I rather. Life copacetic, not no to other. So it really reminds me of just paying homage to God, my parents, my family, all the people who have made me into who I am. Um, just trying to live a righteous life. Bill back can I try live a righteous life? Just life. Nice lifestyle, life. lifestyle. Nice <laughs> life. Life. Yeah, man. Brother, I, 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 I have to say that I I played that song over and over uh, a bit. I realize, thank you, as do many persons when they love music, that it helps them to keep a vibe for what they're doing when they're doing it. And yes. uh, especially if it's a catchy song like yours is, it helps you to keep calm. Like maybe if you study or you're reading something or you're doing some sort of work. So catch Lidge's song season on his YouTube channel. And please do make some comments there or make some comments back here about anything um, in relation to it. You had a competition about um, people changing the, <laughs> the verse. but the verse. It's, it's, it's finished now, right? Yeah. Even in that moment, I was very like afraid. And that's what I'm telling you. Like Since I've released that song, there are times when I question you know, my ability because even now I'm I'm about to release like a second and third song and it's almost like I'm like, whoa, here I am again with the cold feet. But you know, it really reminds you that sometimes you just have to blindly go out because Ooh. people are inspired and the first song is testament of that. I actually did the competition for the first song because it's not only about making people remix the song but I also wanted to give back to the people who supported me. And so there was like a cash prize and stuff like that. And I really was just so thankful of how successful the song was and how well it was received that I wanted people to share into this season as well. So that's pretty much what I've done with just my short career so far. I want it to be something where I can carry on the people who I love along, you know, and give back to those who've given back to me. Blessings, Lich. We have to go to another commercial break. When we come back, we wrap up this episode of the Overcomer series with Lidge Tafari Smith. Most people know him as Legitimate. Soon come. Reach out to MBF Group Limited, owners and operators of Ferrance Exquisite Photo Studio and Business Services for all your photography and videography needs. They're the best for your weddings, graduations, and funerals. They also design and print business cards, flyers, invitations, and personalized items such as t-shirts, cups, and logo stitches. Reach out to Marshalla Brown Ferron on 876-327-8912. Welcome back, everybody. We are at another episode of the Overcomer series. Lich was here. And he is a brilliant young man who's doing all sorts of things over there in the eastern part of the world. But of course, he's an expert from where I am, which is Jamaica. So, Lidge, you mentioned your creative side and that you did a song called Season. Are there any future projects ahead and uh, any other musical things you're thinking of doing? Also, you did your master's or about to complete it. What do you think you'll do with some of these newfound uh, knowledge and things that you you possess? Yeah, actually, Johnny, like, have you know that I want to move to maybe other countries to try to do the same thing? You know, not necessarily teaching English, but imparting knowledge um, and just giving back to people because no knowledge is wasted knowledge. And I feel like when God has given you um, the talent or the reach, you know, you should never waste it because it is not something that comes by how great i am but i just think of how favored i am um and so 
when I think about even music, I always want to be able to make music that's impactful and not necessarily music that is um, at the top of charts. Well, that would be good because we're not going to go on like so that and nice. Mm -hmm. I also really want to be able to say at the end of the day, you know, just as how God would say to me, well done, that people will say, you know, your music has impacted me. Hearing people actually cry from my lyrics makes me cry because I'm like, I never knew it was that serious. You know, I was writing from my heart, but there's no way I'd have known that you would have felt the same way. And so I'm expecting um, great things from myself as well. So working on a project right now um, with my producer, he's all the way in New York, New Jersey, but, you know, we're trying to get it done as well. Um, for people who... You said you asked me one last thing. Sorry, what was it? Yeah, was I, I asked um, what current projects you are working on and looking forward to, as well as all the training that you've done, as well as the masters that you did. What you want to do with it? When as yeah, you so forward. I definitely want to probably not say in education, but more so public speaking, motivational speaking in other countries as well. As I say, in imparting the knowledge, I do plan to go back into media. Um, I don't know when it's going to be, especially due to the fact that traditional media is kind of getting a very tough competition from social media, which I am already on. So maybe I should probably focus on maybe starting my own thing, you know, but the possibilities are endless. And just as how I didn't know I was going to do a degree and just as how I didn't know I was going to do music just three years ago, mm -hmm. I can say that I have not made any definite plans because one thing about my life is that it is scripted by God, even though it's not apparent to me, but I do trust that in whatever way or whatever avenue or whatever place he brings me, he'll ensure that I'm successful, just as how he's made me successful so far. Mm -hmm. The part of a good man is established by the Lord. Lich right. of Larry Smith, legitimate. Thank you so much for coming on to this episode of the Overcomer series. Now, what I'd like you to do is um, say a prayer for two or three sets of people. One, those who may are maybe trying to figure out themselves, maybe trying to figure out what degree to how to do or what to do with the degree that they got, as well as those who have migrated, not migrated, but maybe moved abroad to work, trying to ensure that they do well to help their families abroad. Um, the time in the pandemic has taught us a lot in terms of how connected we are, as well as how important families are and to stay together and help each other. So pray for some of the persons who have these worries and issues in their mind, just like you had, and just speak into them right now. All right, dear God, thank you so much for the ability to speak to Johnny on such a powerful platform. Um, yes, Jesus. Very sure, Lord, that you will make sure that this reaches the ears that needs to hear, and maybe even those who don't even know they want to hear it as as yet. Um, Father God, as there are some people who are trying their very best to maneuver their way, help them to have clarity because that is of utmost importance. There are often times when we say that you are not here when you are. Um, but there are times when maybe we're not silent enough to listen. Father God, whatever nudge we get to make a move, let us consult with you. And when you have approved it, let us make the move and go through fearfully. Lord Jesus, you know, I'm very real. So I know that this is very easier said than done. So there are times when we need that extra push. And I pray that anybody that needs that extra push right now, you'll be able to give them. Um, dear Jesus, as for people who have migrated or people who've lived in other countries are and are at their wits end, I pray that just as how you've given me a reason to continue every single time. You said you'll never leave or forsake them in your word. So I pray that you extend that same grace to them, Lord Jesus. It doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to be degrees. But Lord, help them to have some knack. Help them to become uh, passionate about something. Help them to just do something that they've been um, fearing to do many times because Lord Jesus, you are in the midst and anything that you do, you do well done. And so we have nothing to worry about. Um, we just need to do what we need to do and to leave it in your hands. Dear Jesus, you are a God that makes no mistake. You do not go back on your words. You never change. And so the God that you were before who created miracles and who performed many wondrous things around the world, you will do it again. And you know, there are times when people think that you're not 
miracle working business, but you're still very much in it from Sunday to Sunday. Lord Jesus, I want to just encourage anybody who's watching this now to look at me as an inspiration, even look around them as an inspiration. Um, but at the same time, as much as they're inspired, we're helping, we're asking them um, to do, you know, just being inspired is not enough. You know, inspiration without action is a dream, just as how faith without work is dead. And so, Lord Jesus, we're asking them to get up, rise up, and do whatever they do. Um, and of course, in being a representative of you and your kingdom, so that wherever anyone goes, without even having to open their mouth and declare, they know that they've come by you because of you and for and through you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. We have been overcomers, <laughs> many of us. I'm sure Janila as well. I pray that you, you know, just continue to extend that special anointing to him so that he can continue to just touch people in a special way. And, you know, something that he's doing right now, just hosting and, you know, maybe prying into people's lives in people's opinion, but it's intentional and it's for a reason. And it's to get out for the things that the people who don't ever really think about the things they've done it gives them an opportunity to do that and to speak on it you know let this always be an outlet where people can feel peace joy happiness to share their story and just help him to do whatever he does even outside of this may all his endeavors be successful lord jesus as a man of god Lord Jesus, I thank you for every single thing. I even want to send a shout out, you know, <laughs> as we approach the weekend, send a special anointing to Helsha United um, this Sunday. And I pray that every person who attends will be blessed. Father God, we have overcome before, we will again. And for all the blessings that you've given us from birth till now, we want to say thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Lidge. No, I never think I prayer. was going to pray so long, but this is uh, what the, the length of the prayer is is not the intention. That's That's true. <laughs> but my brother, she's on peace, man. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to get to see you again when you come back down. But trust me. You but did I see you last life. year? Yeah, man. I did see you, man. You know, All you right, we'll go, you're going to see me this year again. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. When you came over to do the recording that you mentioned. And yes. um it's just a blessing to be able to share your story. Obviously, I know a majority of it, but others do not. And I'm hoping and I'm pretty sure that it will touch the lives of some persons who are streaming it. Maybe you want to do something musical and you feel hesitant. This is a great example for you. Maybe you want to move or just go abroad to try to do some work to assist your family. This is a great example. Maybe you're trying to figure out your life um, from doing a degree to what the next stage of your life is. Lidge is a great example. Maybe it is that you're trying to figure out how to improve your education. Lidge is another great example. So let us continue to communicate and learn from each other about how to go through this life. This life is also, we just have to remember that God never just put us here for just put us and we just go through the road. Nope. Just as Lidge thought in his mind when he went to Japan initially. We can push out, do some things for him, and show the world how glorious God is. It may be difficult. We may be doing some things and they're challenging. But I still believe, oh Jesus, that this can be a great season of okay. overcoming. Blessings. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Watch out for the next one next week. Blessings. Here's what's coming up next. On the Overcomer series, season three, I have overcome the world. So the focus is, I know what my goals are. And I somehow, somewhat know how to get there. So I am focused on working to achieve the goals the motivation part now is is like that little fire it's like the the engine it's the push on a daily basis to get there i don't know if that's explaining it join us next week for another inspiring 
and thought-provoking discussion. And remember, you are an overcomer because Jesus said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world.